Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Windows Intune overview session. My name is Kim Johnson. I'm a program manager lead on the Windows Intune product team. I'm Dilip Rajakrishnan. I'm a senior PM on the Windows Intune team. So how many of you attended the keynote this morning? Awesome. And how many of you at the keynote decided to come to this session after all? Perfect. So you guys won't, aren't going to be upset if I spend an hour and 10 minutes on the Wave 2 and five minutes on the new version, are you? No? OK. Just kidding, just kidding. So we're going to spend some time on both. Um, first of all, I just want to talk a little bit about Windows Intune at a high level and then spend a little bit of time going through the product that we do have in market just to show you the basic feature set overall. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time, that'll be about 20 minutes, and then we're going to spend the rest of the time talking about all the new features of the pre-release version that just launched today. Which, round of applause, launch of the pre-release version. Very exciting for all of us. So first of all, just to give you a little bit of a background on the timeline of Windows Intune, our release cadence since we went live last year at MMS. Of course, Wave 1 released last year at this time. Wave 2 we actually released in October of this year, which brought software distribution to the product. That was the big new feature that we released in October. And then, of course, today announcing the pre-release of our vNext version of Windows Intune. Some really exciting features to share with you today, some of which you saw this morning in the keynote, some that you didn't, and we'll go into more detail on. So first of all, just a general background. How many of you are familiar with Windows Intune and have actually tried the product to date? OK, great. How many of you are familiar with Configuration Manager? How many of you have deployments of Configuration Manager in your environments? Perfect. So you'll see a lot of similarity in terms of the basic feature set of Windows Intune and SCCM around software, hardware inventory, update management, software distribution, policy management. So there's some additional capabilities within Windows Intune around malware protection. Based on the forefront endpoint protection, malware protection, or excuse me, the Microsoft malware protection engine, which is also what forefront endpoint protection with SCCM uses. Intune has a simple web-based console that's easy to learn and use. And I'll show you in just a few minutes. So just a minute on our vision with Windows Intune and where we want to go with the product as we move forward. You've heard a lot with the release of SCCM 2012 about enabling flexible work styles, embracing consumerization of IT, talked a lot this morning about employee control devices and being able to manage those at some level. And so we're going to show you some of that. And that's also really what our long-term vision is for the product of Windows Intune. Another thing we like to think about is it's not so much a conversation between SCCM or Windows Intune, but probably an and discussion, where Windows Intune complements SCCM and existing deployment of SCCM. So we'll talk a little bit about that and where we think we're going with that. Also with Windows Intune, as part of your service license, you have upgrade rights to Windows 7 Enterprise Edition, which allows you to keep the latest and greatest operating system deployed within your environment. And lastly, as I mentioned earlier, we've had a rapid release cadence of the product, which allows us to deliver new functionality to our customers, all of you, very quickly. Rather than having to deploy it yourself on premise, you get that automatically through the service in the cloud. So let's talk a minute about some of the challenges some of you may be facing today with various scenarios within your environments. How many of you have employees that like to work from their home machines and have corporate data or applications on home machines that they're using from home? A few of you, OK. And what about a highly mobile workforce, like a sales force that's not online as often as a typical information worker that may be at a corporate building more often than not? OK. And then how many of you have been involved in mergers or acquisitions where you're asked to bring in a group of systems very quickly into your existing environment and have found challenges in doing that? OK, so see, these are some of the areas that our current customers of Windows Intune have seen a lot of benefit from using Intune in terms of the ability to bring, bring clients under management more quickly, such as in the case of mergers and acquisitions. 
Also, enabling better productivity in the field by allowing Salesforce, by managing systems of the Salesforce and allowing them to get updates more easily over the internet. So just a couple of quotes from a few of our customers that have been using this service since we launched it last year. So I'm going to spend just a couple minutes going over the basic features of Windows Intune, a few more minutes going through the demo, actually showing you the web-based administration console that Windows Intune has in market today. And then we will get to what you've all been waiting for, which is the new features in the pre-release version that we just announced today. First of all, just to give you a little information about the three major components of Windows Intune, first of which is the Windows Intune service itself. The Windows Intune service itself was built based on the design of the Microsoft Update Service, which is the largest cloud service in the world. The Windows Intune service is run in enterprise class data centers that are geographically dispersed and run and support millions of customers today. These are Microsoft data centers around the country and the world. The second component of the Windows Intune service is, of course, the agent side. So this is the only piece of software that you actually have to deploy onto your clients to get Intune working for you. And this actually allows for communication, of course, from the client itself <coughs> excuse me, to the Windows Intune service. The third component is the web-based administration console. Today in Wave 2, the administration console identity and login process is based on LiveID. We'll talk a little bit in a few minutes about how we are migrating um, as part of the integration with the Azure Active Directory service in the cloud to allow for ADFS and, and uh, log on through um, Azure Active Directory service um, in the new version of the product that we just released. So we'll provide some more details on that um, in a few minutes. So let's talk for a minute about update management and the capabilities that Windows Intune offers in terms of update management. Similar to, similarly to the way that SCCM is built, Intune leverages the existing WSUS platform to do update management. We do allow for support of third-party updates, and that's actually done through the software packaging component, um, software deployment within Windows Intune, which I'll cover in just a moment. Within Windows Intune, as part of the update management, or excuse me, as part of the policy for the update agent, you're able to set the update check frequency, um, the schedule for deployment, and then also affect and effectively manage the experience that your end users have when updates are applied to their machines through Windows Intune. So in all, this makes patch management easier. You uh, have the ability to also uh, automatically approve updates or manually approve updates as they come in, either in bulk or one by one. And I'll show you that in just a moment within the console. Second area I want to spend just a moment on is endpoint protection. As I mentioned, um, endpoint protection in Windows Intune is the same underlying engine as Forefront Endpoint Protection 2010. You have the ability to, as a uh, system-wide, to look at status per computer or per group, to review malware that's been found in your environment, and to research or learn about that malware through the product itself. And then through remote tasks, you can do follow-up on those systems that may have been affected by malware or systems that you want to scan more frequently because they've had frequent malware issues. So Intune policy management. Within Intune Wave 2, we have some basic policy management. We've expanded on that um, within uh, the pre-release that we've released today. And Dilip will talk a bit about that later on. But you have the ability to set up templates. Through, through use of templates, you have the ability to customize and then deploy a variety of settings out to your systems by groups, by computer groups in Wave 2. And in the pre-release, of course, as we bring in user-centric management, you'll have the ability to do that by user group as well. Software distribution. So this is an area that we made a lot of change in the newest release of the product. And so I'm going to let Dilip spend some more time on this later on. Within Wave 2, in, in this October release of this year, 
we introduced the ability to do push software to computers, which basically means similar to what you do in Configuration Manager, you have the ability to package and then push out software to your groups of computers. Within the new release of the product, you'll see functionality demonstrated, actually, later in the presentation, where you have the ability to deploy software as available, and users can pull that software to their devices. With the Windows Intune service, you also get up to 20 gigabytes of Azure storage space for your software packages. How many of you use software distribution today within SCCM? Okay. How many of you are on SCCM 2012, either in TAP or RC versions, and have experience with user-centric deployment? All right. All right. So let's spend just a couple minutes. So first of all, um, I know it's a little uncouth to demo in a live environment, but I decided that I wanted to make my life a little more exciting today. So I am going to demo out of our live MMS environment that we're using to actually manage the machines that are out there in the hands-on labs and the machines that are available for attendees. So you never know when you're going to get when you demo in that kind of environment. So bear with me a little bit. As you can see, we've got about 650 computers managed in our environment here at the show. We've got them grouped in various areas. You can see some of the instructor machines, hands-on labs, et cetera. I'm going to be nice and trustworthy and not reboot any machines while everybody's out there trying to do a hands-on lab. Let's actually start over here in system overview, though. I want to talk for just a minute about kind of the logical workflow of the system within the console. The left-hand side, this pane you can kind of think of as the navigation pane, the various workspaces within Windows and Tune. This area here focuses on information relative to the workspace that you're currently in. And you can kind of think of this area as the action pane. Within the information for system overview, you'll see a variety of alerts. These alerts can be customized. We've actually done some enhancements as well in terms of the ability to set and customize alerts in uh, the pre-release version that Dilip will talk about in a moment. In this version of the product in Wave 2, you have the ability to also send out notification emails to a specific group of people and configure notifications for various types of alerts so that alerting happens not only in the console, but can go out to an administrator through email as well. I mentioned earlier that there's only really one piece of software that you have to install to get into and up and running, and that's the client-side agent. And that can actually be done right here through the administration workspace within the console. I'm going to go back up to overview for just a minute, because interestingly, last night when I was working on this, there was actually only like one piece of malware that had been resolved. So I'm going to take a look and see what has happened this morning. Looks like there are, there's a computer that has gotten a number of viruses that have been resolved. So here we can see the actual machine that got these viruses. So let's take a look. So you can see that for the viruses that actually hit this machine this morning, they were removed. Let's see where this computer is. So this is a machine in area A. So this is my area A group. I'm not sure what you guys were downloading out there, but apparently um, it was not a very safe website that people were surfing. So we're going to go back over here, and we can actually look at the rest of the malware that came in. I'm going to take a look at this particular virus. You can learn more about the malware by clicking, highlighting the um, malware itself and clicking on learn more about this malware. This actually takes you out to the threat, and, um, excuse me, the threat research and response website where you can get information on the type of malware, the history on it, symptoms. And of course, at this point, Intune has already actually removed the malware from the machine and is providing you information on what it was. Let's 
go back over to endpoint protection. And I'll show you in just a minute how you can configure endpoint protection settings within policy as we set up policy and deploy to the rest of the system. So just to spend a moment on updates, as I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to configure automatic update approvals within Windows Intune. So if you wanted to configure approvals on certain types of updates, like security updates, or you wanted to configure approvals for all updates, but only to a certain group of machines, like a group of test machines, before you automatically deploy to all computers, you can do that as well. I'm not actually going to create new configuration rules since this is a live environment, but I'm just going to show you briefly the UI for that. So here you have the ability to configure based on certain categories. And then as you walk through the UI, it will allow you to also select groups that you want to automatically approve on. I'm going to cancel this for right now. Go back over and also show you. So if you go to the overview screen within your updates window, similar to what you would see in the system overview page, you can see new updates. And I've got filtered on new updates to approve. You have the ability to select individual updates to manually approve or group select updates to manually approve. When you approve an update, you can then automatically update to um, a group of computers or all computers within your environment. So like I said earlier, if you wanted to configure to update to only a test group of machines, and once you've determined that there are no problems with that group and then roll out to the rest of your computers, you have the ability to do that. I'm going to go over and show you policy for just a moment. As I mentioned earlier, there are three main templates within Windows Intune Wave 2 policy. We'll add an additional template in the pre-release that Dilip will show you later, and that's going to be for mobile device management, for management of modern devices for settings. You have the ability to configure and set a policy for firewall, Intune Center settings, and Intune Agent settings. The Agent settings is where you would actually create policy and settings around endpoint protection, update management, et cetera. I'm not going to create a new policy right now, but let's take a look at one of the policies that we have in the system now. So we've got our default MMS agent policy. You can see that we've targeted all computers with this particular policy. So this should be rolled out to all of the 650 computers that we've got managed in this environment. I'm going to go ahead and go back and look at one of these machines. And what you can see in this particular policy view on this individual machine is that the default MMS agent policy is, uh, has been applied, and the settings are conforming for this specific policy. So you'll see here in the main view, you have your expected value and the last reported value by the system. And you can see individually if these settings are conforming or not. This view will also raise conflicts. For instance, if you have a machine that's got group policy applied as well, and you've got conflicts between group policy and the Intune policy, those will show in this view. Note that group policy will win in this case. So group policy will not, or excuse me, Intune will not reset a policy based on a conflict with group policy. But it will notify you of that conflict. Next area that I want to touch on briefly is software deployment and also software inventory. So detected software. This is clearly software inventory and information that is gathered off of the machines that you're managing. You can see in this particular environment that we've got a pretty consistent set of applications installed on these machines, which is to be expected. We've imaged these machines with specific um, applications in mind. I'm going to go ahead. You can also um, add agreements for your software. And I'll show you in a moment when we go into license management um, how you can add agreements and then track your deployments against those agreements. Take just a minute to look at managed software. So as I mentioned earlier, you have the ability to package and upload and store software within Windows Azure as part of the Intune service. So I'll just briefly show you what that looks like. Apparently, it wants to install first. OK, well, let's see what happens here. Um. 
So software packaging will allow you to uh, select your executable file that you want to package and save up into the service. So I'm going to go ahead and select a PowerPoint viewer. It'll automatically bring in the information from the executable itself that's available. You can set specific requirements for the machines that will install specific requirements to install the software to machines. <clears throat> and you can require specific operating systems that uh, be running on the machine in order for installation to kick off. I'm not going to go through all of the setup with detection rules. I think those of you who are familiar with um, System Center Configuration Manager and software distribution and defining requirements and detection rules, you'll see this is similar to what you've got in the Configuration Manager for packaging of applications. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of here. As you can see, these are the software packages that we've got uploaded into this environment right now. You also can see the size of the packages themselves. And if you go over to administration and storage use, you actually see of the 20 gigabytes that you're um, given for free, uh, Azure Storage for free as part of your Intune service, you can see how much of that you've used within the administration. And you can also, of course, uh, purchase additional storage of, above and beyond that 20, megabyte, or 20 gigabytes of space. Excuse me. Now, once you've got applications uploaded that you want to deploy, simply right-click the application or double-click it, click Deploy, and you'll get a deployment wizard that allows you to select groups that you want to deploy the application to. In the pre-release version of Windows Intune, you'll have the ability to deploy software as available to user groups so that users on devices like iOS devices and Android devices can browse to the company portal that's also new in the pre-release version and get that software. In this particular version, this was, a, as I mentioned earlier, a mandate, mandatory software-only deployment, so a push scenario rather than a pull scenario. So that's what you're seeing here. All right, and the last area I just want to briefly touch on is um, the ability to manage your volume license agreements um, within the licensing workspace of Windows Intune. So you're able to add agreements for uh, Microsoft Volume Licensing Agreements and then third-party agreements in addition to that. So as you manage and deploy software within your environment, you then have a way of more easily truing up to your agreements that you've loaded into the system. All right. OK, how many of you are ready to see more about the new things we're doing in Windows Intune with the pre-release? All right, I'm going to go ahead and hand off to Dilla. Thank you, Kim. So what we did was when we started planning for this next release, uh, we started talking to our customers and said, OK, what are the current trends you're seeing in your enterprise? And how can we help you address some of those concerns? So as you heard from Keynote this morning, consumerization of IT, right? This was pretty much top part of our conversation with most of our customers. So this came up in almost all the meetings we had. So historically, the devices and technology devices have originated in the business space. What happens is you had PCs, uh, and printers, fax machines, all those things uh, originated in the business space and then became commoditized and became consumer devices. But the last few years, you've seen a re reversal in this trend. So what you see is people go and buy their own smartphones and their tablets, start bringing them into work, and expect that they can connect to the IT environment and get access to all the applications and email and all the features they're used to from their PC. So this puts additional pressure on the IT department to now support all these kinds of devices. Our research shows that our current uh, number of personal devices used to connect to at least check your email, that's uh, constituting around 31% of your devices. And that number is going to ex expect it to be increasing to 45% by 2014. The second trend we heard from our customers was that your end user profile is also changing. So people are more tech savvy. They're used to all these intuitive experiences they have with their devices. And the last thing they want to do is when they come into work and work with the IT solutions, that they have to go up, read a user manual, and get things working. Right? So their uh, expectations on IT and the services offered by IT is also changing. So all this is uh, adding these additional questions for IT. Right? 
one of our customers mentioned that right, he dreads the holiday season, right? Because when December comes, all these new devices come into the market, and then in Jan, all these devices start showing up at work. And now you have to manage all these new types of devices. And the second thing is they're concerned about all the security risks that come up with it. They've spent a lot of time in enterprises to try to bring the PCs under security and compliance systems. And now when you have these all personal owned devices coming in, what are all the security implications? What are the privacy and legal implications? Because if a personal device contains corporate data and the person loses the device, am I allowed to wipe the device or not? Right? And that depends on which geography you're operating in, and there are different legal requirements around that. So across the board, it was clear that uh, people were rethinking about tools, strategies, and processes they're using to manage their devices. So in this release, we are investing in three major areas. One is the IT Pro experience. As Kim showed, what you saw in Wave 2 was all around PC management. But as you can see, every user has more than one device. So it becomes more optimal and ideal to manage those users, and we in Intune will help you manage the relationship between the user and their devices. So the, using a user-centric approach, you can then push policy and software to users rather than directly to the devices. The second area of investment is around the consumer, what we call the company portal. This is a self-service portal that we are building for your end users. You can brand it and customize it the way you want. And what it gives the end users is it empowers them to take control of at least their own devices and get access to the applications when they need it and from whichever device they need it. But all this still happens under the control of IT because IT department still decides what applications are published in the system. And this is a win-win for both because, as I said, consumers feel more empowered, but at the same time, IT is also delegating some of the help desk tier one level calls that you get uh, now the end users can manage them by themselves. So the third area of investment is around modern device management. So what you saw in the keynote today was what we are uh, kind of announcing with this release is support for iOS and Android devices and Windows phones in addition to managing PCs. So what we'll do is we'll help you secure these devices and we'll also help your users to be productive from these devices by accessing the same kind of portal infrastructure that you would get access from a PC as well. So all these three major areas of investment have been built on a strong foundation of user-centric management. If you're familiar with SCCM, this is a concept that is pioneered by the SCCM product. And what we've done is take those same concepts and build the experience to scale to a cloud-based scenario so you can manage all your remote users using the same set of concepts you're used within the SCCM console. Now let's go into details of each one of these areas. The first thing that comes to mind when you want to make admins think users first is, what is the user identity, right? Typically, your scenario is when a new user joins your company after they get through the HR system, you go and create a user account in your Active Directory. And that identity for that user becomes the primary identity they use to access all your corporate resources, be it uh, access to control to all your services, to your shares, everything. So when we have a similar uh, solution, like when we have to take these user management scenarios and take them to the cloud, what's our solution there? So there we are leveraging the Windows Azure Active Directory service. This is a new online directory service from Microsoft, which is ready for enterprise customers because you have all these big services like Office 365 relying on the same service. So Intune is now snapping onto the same Azure Active Directory service. So you get two benefits out of the box. One, you can leverage the connectivity that is there between an on-premise Active Directory to your cloud Active Directory. So there's a lot of tools that come with that, and I'm going to actually show you a couple of those during the demos in the session. And what, what you'll also see is, with the previous release we had, you saw Kim log in using her Windows Live ID credentials. Though Live ID is a really secure uh, service, it is more targeted at consumer market, right? You have your SkyDrive and Hotmail kind of application use the Live service, but what our customers really want in an enterprise scale is the scalable and securable enterprise organization identities that they want to create. And Azure Active Directory, again, solves that problem. So once the identity of the user is established, then you can come into the system and we introduce a concept of user device affinity. And this is the feature where it allows you to take a user and map the relationship between the user and the devices associated with that user. 
So this view then starts giving you a totally different perspective of your IT infrastructure. You can not only now just look at what are the devices that are having compliance issues, but you can immediately say who are the users who are impacted when I see a compliance issue. If it is a CEO, maybe I'll have to go and take a different kind of action about remediation than just probably a different set of users. The third major feature we are introducing is a concept called dynamic grouping. Once again, if you're an SCCM customer, you're probably familiar with it. But with Intune, with the previous release, membership to a group was a static list. All you could do was go and say, here are the list of devices that belong to this group. But with this release, what we are enabling is you as an IT pro to go in and create a query, a dynamic criteria that says, okay, users who belong to this security group or users who are having this person as a manager, and that becomes your criteria for a group definition. And what this enables you to do is, once the user's membership changes, uh, he moves from one security group to another group, it automatically gets reflected within Intune. So you don't have to do any manual trying to keep those definitions in sync. So you'll also, when you do the definition of those groups, you'll see that you'll be able to define exception rules. You can say, here are all users of this particular group, but I want to exclude these set of users, maybe my executives from this group. So you can define that kind of dynamic groups. So all these kinds of relationships that you're defining between your users to your devices, as well as from your users to the security groups and the managers kind of relationships, now help you target policies and software in a user-centric way. So for example, in a mobile device case, you can target a policy, like a security policy to the user, and then all devices associated with the user get that kind of policy. And that also helps reduce your IT uh, cost and simplicity because you're not really going after and managing every one of the devices of the user. Right? So most likely you know the role that the user is playing and then you can cater to that role what the security for that user should be. So let's look at behind the scenes how this all works. So you have your users. Uh, you have two choices now. So if you want to take advantage of your Active Directory, the on-premise Active Directory, and then synchronize it with your online directory, then you go through the first option, which is take your users in AD. There's a one-time setup required of a tool called Directory Synchronization Tool. What this lets you do is define your uh, credentials for your corporate AD, as well as the credentials to your Azure Active Directory account. So, And what this will do is automatically sync all the users and security objects and manager kind of information. All the user attributes are all populated and synchronized into your cloud directory. So the benefit you get out of that is you can enable a single sign-on, both for your administrators as well as for your end users. You could potentially use your login credentials that you use at your work, can be used to log into the Intune consoles. The second option, if you're not willing to roll out this kind of a large directory integration yet, and what you can still do is still get all the benefits because you can directly open up the Azure Active Directory account, and there in that account, you can create users, and you can create security groups, and pretty much have the same functionality you would get except for the single sign-on kind of benefits you get with the on-premise directory integration. So once those users are inside your cloud directory, the next step involved is to actually associate a license for those users to bring them and manage them within the Intune console. And the scenario here could be, again, you had, say, 10,000 users in your on-prem AD that you synchronized to the cloud. And what you've now done is, out of those, you probably have, say, 5,000 remote users you're trying to manage. So only those users for which you want to use Intune, you can associate a license for those users, and then they'll start showing up in the Intune console. So once the users are showing in the Intune console, then all the scenarios light up like what Kim was demonstrating. You can now target policies, software. You can see all the devices associated with the user. And we're going to see a detailed demo of that shortly. So before I go on to the demo, let's also step back and look at what we are doing for the end users. right? So one part of the user-centric story was what we are enabling for the IT pros. Now, as an end user, when I log into the company portal, one of the problems that we are solving is if you have a remote user, uh, even if you have your best software distribution solution, how do you really get the agents out there to those machines? Right? This has been a hard problem, and people have used various ways to get that uh, agents enrolled on remote machines. But now what we have done is 
uh, with this integration and availability of a company portal, all you have to do is send an email to your remote user saying, hey, if you want to access your corporate data, you need to go and go to this company portal URL, log in with the credentials we give you, and once you do that, you can go in and click on my, all my devices, and we have a very simple installation of the client. So within a few minutes of this end user sitting on a remote site, goes to the portal and downloads the app and starts installing it, it will start showing up in the Intune admin console. So you can start managing all these remote users and their devices right away. And because it was an end user initiated operation, you also get automatically the user device affinity for that user. Because this is the user who's going and claiming that, hey, this is a device that I'm using in my home office. And uh, now we use that information to create a relationship saying, here are the devices associated with this user. You can also, as an IT pro, go in and override that or move resources around, but that's one way of doing it. So the most important functionality that's lighting up through the company portal currently is also the web-based software catalog. Here, what we can do is you can say all the mandatory apps that you want to install, like Office or Link, you can maybe push it out directly to, uh, through the software push model that Kim demoed. But for all the other optional apps, it doesn't really make sense to say, OK, you have to install it by this day and this time on this device. Right? So what we can enable now is uh, through the portal, what you can go and see is click on your apps. You can look at the list of apps that are published to you as a user based on your role. And then you can install it at your own convenience. And you can also install it on any of your devices. And we'll be able to track the license and compliance still for those uh, PC apps. So the other cool things is you can install the app either locally or remotely. So if you have multiple machines, you don't have to be physically on those machines. As long as you have access to those machines, from the portal, you can actually install the apps anywhere. And you don't even have to have local admin privileges. So we'll send this instruction out to Intune, and we'll, since we run in the system context, we'll be able to go in and install these apps for you. And last but not least, uh, since you can brand the company portal, you can have the information on how to contact IT in terms of when issues arise for the end user. But as you can see, with all these features, we've already kind of reduced the impact an end user could have uh, on the IT help desk. Like for simple operations, they just go here first, try to fix it themselves, and then if they can't, then they go after and raise a ticket with IT to get the job done. Okay, it's time for demo. So for the demo scenario here, what I'm going to do is there's a fictitious company I've set up called Contasso.com. Uh, what I'm, uh, I'm going to be the IT pro. Uh, Kim is the uh, user, end user who's going to be using the system. And she's working from a remote office, uh, and she also fits very well with the tech geek user profile we have. She has a lot of devices. She's got a Windows phone. Of course, we all at Microsoft love our Windows phones. And, but she also has an iPad uh, that she has that she wants to connect to work and check with her emails. And she has a PC. Uh, and today, the scenario is she's got a laptop, and she wants to replace that laptop. She's got a new laptop. She no longer wants to use the old laptop. OK? So the first thing is we start with the user identity. right? So for the user-centric, the scenario really starts off with your on-premise Active Directory. So what you're looking at here is the Contoso Intune domain. And what you can see is the list of users in Contoso domain. I can browse it and then look at Kim's account. So Kim is a user in Contoso. This is her email address, and this is her domain that she logs into. So once you have this information, as I said, uh, there is a very simple tool that directory sync that you can launch. I can't launch it from the domain control. It has to be installed on a member server in your domain. And you can all you have to do, it's a very simple two-step wizard. It takes your credentials for your active directory on-premise and takes the credentials for your online account and then starts setting up the synchronization. So once those user accounts are synchronized, we log in into what we call the Intune account portal. So here's the first experience you'll have when you come into as a trial or a user uh, who's purchased Intune from this release onwards. So you come into the account portal. You come and say you can manage all your licenses. You can buy additional licenses for Intune. You can raise service tickets or check the uh, health of the overall service. You can see how our servers in different data centers are doing. If you run into issues, what's our availability of our service currently? So. 
going back to the admin page, so one of the things you'll notice here is the user tab. So what you're really looking at when I click on this user is a view of the Azure Active Directory of all the users that are synchronized into the console. So you can see that here are the list of same users that you saw in your on-premise AD that are now already synchronized into Intune. And here is where I also mentioned that you can create your own users directly in through the portal, right? So you can see the difference in the icon here. So this user, Joe, came in directly because I created it as a user using the new user feature here. This is if you don't want to take advantage of the uh, on-premise AD integration, you could do that. But in case of Kim's account, what I have done is I've gone and uh, integrated it from, with my on-premise AD. So you can see that her account is already synchronized with AD. So the next step is now how do I take Kim's account and then make it available through the Intune console? So what you have to do is click on Kim, and then it's a very simple process to associate a license to Kim. So once you associate this license to Kim's account, you can see and manage her through the Intune console. In addition, if you want, you could also delegate and make her an admin into the system. So if you have your own IT pro department, the other users, here's where you come and say, yeah, they can be an administrator and they can play a global administrator role. So in which case, they also become admins of the Intune console, who can log into the Intune admin console. So in addition to users, you can also come and uh, manage all the security groups. Here is, again, all the list of security groups that were there in your on-prem AD that has already been into imported and to be managed through Intune system. Let's now move on and see what the IT Pro experience and how that's changed in this release. So what you're looking at now is the Windows Intune um, admin console. So we have security implemented, so we'll time out if you've not logged on or used it for a while. So what you can see is this is the same kind of admin experience that you had with Wave 2 that Kim demonstrated, but right away you'll see the changes. We no longer just manage devices. You have this node called all users. You can click on the all users and again see all those users who were in your on online directory, but for whom you've associated a license to Intune. So these are the user accounts who can actually log into the company portal when they want to uh, get all their tasks done. So again, let's look for Kim's account here. And actually, we have cool search features. Let's take advantage of that. So there's Kim. And one thing which you can immediately see is look at what are the status of Kim across all her devices. So we can look at what are, is she having any software deployment issues? Is there any policy issues? But then I can also really look at and see that she's got four devices. So let's go drill down. So we can go and see the list of devices. So you can see how we are managing the user and the device affinity. So we can look at Kim has a Windows phone, she has an iPad, she has a laptop that she wants to replace today, and she has a Windows 7 PC as well. So what we're going to do next is once this user and device identities are established, let's go in and log into the admin console, uh, the, sorry, the end user console, and see what Kim's experience looks like. So before we do that, let's look at what you can do to customize her experience for the end user. This is the Contoso Corp. So I've branded the portal with my company name, put my information for the contact information. You could even customize the color and the look and feel of the portal. While this might look like a trivial feature, one of our large retail customers insisted they have this capability because they wanted it in their corporate colors of red, not their competitor's color of blue. So we'll have the ability to now go in and log in as the end user here. So let's go to Kim's machine. So this is the experience that Kim gets when she logs into the portal. So let's log in as Kim. So one of the first things you'll notice is uh, this is the branded portal, the Contoso Corporation, and I can look at all my devices. I can contact IT for help. I can look and see what apps I have to install. So when I go and look at all my devices, it's the same kind of view that an admin got, but now you're seeing it from an end user perspective. You can click on each of your devices and see what you can do with them. And this is an in 
interesting scenario we'll cover when we come to the mobile devices, but if you as an admin didn't want to go and wipe your own uh, user's device because of legal issues, you can point them and say when they report a lost or stolen device, they can actually go and wipe it themselves. So, but coming back to the PC scenarios, let's go and uh, look at, oh, okay, I, I've seen these devices, but I'm already logging in from a new laptop. So I want to go and add my, uh, my computer now into the Intune system. So all you have to do is go here, download the software, and start running it. And then once it downloads and does the security scan, it will start installing. So I'll just click, click the start. We're not going to wait for it to complete the install, but uh, I'll get that going. So well, we can come back and check it later. So the other thing you notice is this apps feature. So when you click on apps, you can look at all the apps that are published to Kim as a user. So you can look at all the categories. I mean, in my demo environment, I don't have many, but you can publish more. Uh, and once the number of apps become more than 20, you have a very cool customization of how the portal looks. And you can browse by categories of apps, and, or you can search it. You can sort by title, publisher, and various ways to get to your apps. And each of those apps, you can actually choose when you click on it uh, whether where to install it which machine where you want to install it. This is the feature I talked about, whether you want to install that app either locally or on a remote machine. So you could do it from the same console. So while the installation is still in progress, uh, it's, yes, I'll let Intune install. So let's switch back to the admin console for a minute. So the next feature I want to quickly talk about was the dynamic grouping. So what you do here is you go and see the list of uh, groups. Uh, since Kim is working remotely, we are putting her in, to say, marketing. So what I'm going to do is directly add her account. So I'm just going to put Kim into this account. But you could choose to actually go and browse based on your security groups or based on the managers that the user is a member of. So you could do those. So you can exclude members if you don't want in your group definition. Let's hit finish, and your group's been created. Okay. So once it refreshes, you should see your marketing team. So now Kim is a member of the marketing team. So what we can do is, now we saw the list of apps that were available for Kim. So once she's up and running on her system, we also want to make sure that she has all the apps she needs for getting her job done. So what we're going to do is make Skype available for her so she can call in and work with us uh, when she is not at the office. So what you can do is it's a very simple step. You can look at the list of apps that were there. So you can go and say, I want marketing team, in addition to the sales team, to have Skype available. So you go next. So what you have to do is instead of a required install, which is a push model, what we are saying is it's available to install. So you click on this option to say it's available to install. You hit finish, and now this app is published. So let's go back to see what Kim's experience is. You can go back to her console. So one of the first things you'll notice is I'll go and refresh this. And you can see the list of apps. There's Skype published for Kim. So she can go and install this. Now, what you also notice that the installation completed. So you have this laptop 2 now available on this machine. So you can directly go and install Skype on this machine. Cool. So what we saw in this demo was an end-to-end -end scenario, right? We started from a user identity in their on-premise Active Directory. We moved them to the cloud service. We synchronized them, made them available within the Intune console. We help you associate a user and device relationship. And once you've got all this done, you're able to now publish apps to them and make them work from anywhere on any of their devices. So that's the whole scope of some of the end-to-end -end scenario we have with this. So moving on. Let's look at the second area of features around modern device management. So here is where we enable your users to connect to the corporate resources from any of these devices that you saw, iOS or Android devices or from Windows Phone. One of the first features is the mobile portal. So we want to make your end users productive on these remote machines. 
uh, from these uh, tablets or your smartphones. So what you'll see is you have the same kind of experience that you saw with the catalog from a PC. You can now get it available from your iOS devices. The main benefit of this scenario is, suppose you have your own line of business app you've developed for your iOS device, right? And you don't want to go and publish that on an Apple's store, because this isn't really meant for your own users in your organization. So what this feature lets you do is you publish your own catalog and make it available so that when you log in from your iPad or your iPhone, you have that access to that same portal experience, and then you'll be able to install that app. This is one of the demos we'll see shortly. Um, the second thing is we help you protect corporate data. And we do that by letting you set, first restrict the types of devices that can get into your environment. Right? So you don't want to say, uh, maybe you, your scenario is you want to make sure encryption is supported on all the mobile devices that you're managing. And you know that certain earlier versions of Android didn't support encryption. So you can set a rule through the system that prevents a user from enrolling an Android device that was, say, less than version 3.0. So once you set these global rules that act actually applies across all the device types, you can go in and be very specific as well. You can go and say, OK, for all these users, I want to have a security policy with passcode length should be so much, and it needs to be alphanumeric. So you can set all those kinds of policies and then target them to user groups instead of targeting them to mobile devices directly. So once you target them to users, we take care of translating that requirement and uh, setting it for those devices. And the third scenario is around if you have lost or stolen devices, as I showed earlier, you can let the end user do a wipe, or you as an admin, if you have the legal rights and permissions to do that, especially for personally owned devices. For corporate owned devices, it's not as much of an issue. But if it's a personally owned phone and you want to wipe it, you need to be careful based on where you are for all the privacy issues with it. So all this is also happening with a single pane of glass, right? So we don't want to distinguish and say, OK, you go for your mobile management, go to this console, this product, and go for your PC management, use this product, and uh, go to Exchange for doing some part of your mobile mail management, right? So we're trying to bring all those scenarios under one experience. And as you saw in the user device affinity, you can directly drill down from Kim's user to all the devices of Kim. So again, what's the architecture behind the scenes? So if you look at it, it's very similar to the picture you had earlier. The extra step here is we take a dependency in, uh, on the exchange infrastructure on your premise, just like we have an AD dependency for some of you. Who... So if you use the Exchange Server 2010, we have a connector called the Intune Exchange Connector. This lets you synchronize your list of uh, users and their mobile devices and bring it, brings it into Intune. And once you have those devices discovered and brought into Intune, then you can set policy software the way I said within the Intune console. So I wanted to uh, point out that if you are using the features that we're going to demo, right, the security aspects and the inventory aspects, you need the connector and the exchange on-prem infrastructure. However, if you just want to have the app catalog and the benefits out of that, you don't even need to have an exchange connector dependency. You can directly browse for this portal URL and directly access it from, our, uh, for, from your mobile devices. Let's take a quick demo now of how this scenario looks. Once again, we're back into the Intune console. One of the first things you'll notice right away is in the system overview dashboard, we no longer just manage devices. You'll see a mobile device summary. So you can click on it and right away look at the breakdown of the types of devices that are there. You have Windows, iOS, and Android devices. Obviously, we have a big Microsoft shop, so we have a lot more phones that are running Windows 7. The other cool things is you can block or uh, allow access to exchange devices based on their compliance level. So if you think their policy is not compliant, you can decide, OK, this user doesn't get email access till he is compliant to the policy. So one of the steps is needed as an infrastructure if you want to take advantage of all the exchange-related features is you go and to the mobile device management node. And then you can set up a connector download. So this is very similar to the client download. It's a very easy install. Just install it on your Exchange server or any box that can access Exchange. And this can directly communicate to your uh, Exchange server. You it needs credentials for your Exchange account, and it needs credentials to the Intune account. So then it starts synchronizing as and when users join 
their mobile devices to connect to Exchange, we pull in those in users into Intune and we can manage them through that. So we can see that there's the ability to run a synchronization. It happens periodically every four hours, but you can force it also right away if you want to do it. So once you've done those features, you can go in and start seeing how we can secure those devices. So first thing is the mobile device access rules. Here is the feature where you go in and define, here are all the devices that I'm trying to allow in my enterprise and the ones that I'm not. And once you do that, you can set custom rules, like when you want to block these devices. Like if you see a totally new device, say Kindle Fire, maybe that's running some version of Android. Is that supported? If not, what do you want to do when you see that device? Do you want to block it, or do you want to quarantine that device? And then you make a call later whether you want to act on it. The other thing you can do is let's go and create a simple policy. In the policy space, you'll see a new template. This is called the mobile security policy. Let's go and create a custom policy that lets you customize these settings. So let's say there is a demo policy. And here is where you go in and look at all these different sections. You can say, here are my password settings. Here is my encryption settings, whether I want to require encryption on a mobile device or not. I can restrict the email attachments, whether they can download it to their device or not. And last but not least, if you're really paranoid, you can even disable and say, OK, I don't want to allow camera. Or... Because there are some scenarios where you could say, this is a device that is a shared use device that multiple users are using for a specific task purpose. Then you might want to disable some of these capabilities. So let's do this. Let's save this policy. It will now ask me, do you want to deploy this? I say yes. And once again, what you notice is unlike in Wave 2, we allow you to target policies to user groups. Now you choose that Kim is part of marketing, so her iPad needs to be secured and managed, as well as her Windows phones as well. So I'm going to set this policy. So this policy is now, uh, it'll flow through Exchange infrastructure to the mobile device and back. But I can show you quickly how it'll look when the data comes back. So you can go to Redmond, go to marketing, look at Kim's devices. You can see that her Windows phone already had a previous version of the policy. And you can see that it's the exact same experience you had for managing your PC, but now it's available for your mobile devices. So in one shot, you look at same kind of intended values and the conformance status of those devices. So let's move on to the last part of the demo, which is uh, similar to what you saw at the keynote this morning. But the difference is we, uh, Kim has this iPad. And ours is going to work, too. So we can switch to. So what you, go ahead. So um, what I've got here is my iPad device. And I've got the um, company portal for Contoso, which is the portal that uh, Dilip showed you earlier from the laptop. Let me just go ahead and refresh this. You'll see right now that I've got two apps within my list on the portal available to me to install. I wanted to show you that. We're going to switch back over, do the software deployment, come back so you can see it all the way through to the iPad itself. So when you look at the managed, oh, managed apps, so you notice that it's not only Windows apps now. You can upload your own iOS or Android apps. So let's look at a travel planner app that we've developed for her iPad. So think of this as your line of business app that you've internally developed for your own users to track their travel expenses. Um, so here is Kim, she's part of marketing team. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. And it's the exact same experience like you did for PC. You make it an available to install instead of actually making it install automatically. Now let's go back to her iPad. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. Okay. I'm going to cross my fingers. All right, you can just hit get up. Go ahead and hit Get Apps. And now, instead of two, ah, come on. I spoke way too soon on the It Works part. Oh, I must have hit something else. Hold on. I uh, hit the privacy statement. As you can see, the pre-release privacy statement is launched and available online right now. I mean, <laughs> are 
Our Wi-Fi connection's a little slow in here. Can you guys get all off the Wi-Fi connection for a moment? OK, there we go. So okay. now you can see um, that the application that Dilip just offered to me as available is available to me as a user to install on my device. Yeah. Okay. So switching back to the deck. Um, so those were the, some of the major areas, but what we also have is a very passionate set of customers that we work with from our wave one release onwards. So we've been actually getting a lot of feedback. So in addition to these major features, we've got tons of feedback that, and we've added a lot of enhancements in this release. Because of lack of time now, I'm going to not talk about everything. I'll just probably talk about the top two asks that came and how we are addressing it. One concern that people have all the time is, hey, we have uh, this kind of software distribution scenario. You're trying to do it over a cloud and you have all these remote branch office users, everybody's trying to go connect up, download, and full office package or full service pack. How is this going to scale? Like, it's going to throttle the bandwidth on my remote site. So what we did was we published blog posts. We gave some calculators on how much you can use. But the real uh, benefit we really offer with the new release is we now take advantage of the Win7 peer distribution APIs. So this is the same technology that powers the branch cache feature. So what you can now happen is when you actually install the product, uh, whatever download on the first device on the remote site, that starts becoming the distribution point for all the other devices on that site. So the best part is there's no additional infrastructure required for your, from your site. The Intune agent that gets installed with the new release automatically takes care of this feature. So this will be a huge bandwidth saver for all those customers that use software distribution on remote sites. So the other often asked feature we got was a request around, hey, I'm setting a firewall policy, and it takes eight hours for it to propagate down to those PCs. Can you make it faster? So we now offer a feature called a remote task for refreshing policies. If you're familiar with group policy, think of GP update, but done through a cloud scenario. So these PCs can be anywhere in the world, but you can do a remote update on policies. It will refresh the policy immediately as long as those devices are connected. But if not, as and when the device tries to connect to the service, it will immediately queue up the task and do it. We've also done a lot of optimization on the alerts so that we don't overwhelm you with all the alerts on the home page. You can go and customize based on category, severity of issues, or top alerts for the day. And if some of these alerts don't even make sense for your environment, you can reduce the severity of those issues. So those are some of the things. I mean, the group membership is also dynamic now for PCs, not just for users. So you could use uh, a criteria that we have, which is OU membership. So if your device is part of this OU, put it into this Intune group. And when the users move from one OU to another, it again dynamically gets picked up, and your devices are managed that way. And update management, we got a lot of feedback from the patch Tuesday scenarios, like Microsoft received, received so we released like five bulletins, and we want to know how are we doing in terms of compliance against these five areas. So you can now go, there's a new filter that security updates by knowledge base, so you can track it by bulletin, how many devices are approved, how many have installed the update. So there's tons of such features. Um, so what we've done is covered and provided a broad overview, but there are two other sessions today we, we urge you to attend, because you can go and see a lot more details, some more demos on the, more the mobile side as well as on the... PC side. All right. So we've gone over today a little bit about the existing service in the cloud, a lot of information on the new functionality that is being released as part of the pre-release version of Intune, available today to you. Um, just a couple of items, a call to action. Dilip mentioned the other two sessions we had this afternoon. They'll spend a little more time going a little deeper on some specific feature areas. We've got one session at 2 o'clock, Nilesh? No, two, 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 I'm sorry. Two o'clock and four o'clock. Two o'clock is the Windows Intune deep dive, excuse me, is the modern device management with Windows Intune session. Four o'clock is the Windows Intune deep dive session. So please come by and take a look at um, some of the additional information on the new features. And then also, we encourage you to sign up for either a trial account or to test the pre release version. One note of information about that if you want an account that you can actually migrate to a production account, You'll want to do a trial account on the in-market Wave 2 product. If you want to test the pre-release version and see the new features, you can sign up for an account to do that. It's available today. Um, 
but we will not be migrating those accounts to production accounts. You'll have to set up a new account. So just keep that in mind as you sign up for the uh, pre-release product. Thank you very much to everyone for joining us today. We also are having a customer reception this evening to celebrate the launch of the Windows Intune pre-release. So feel free to come by. It's from 5.30 to 7.30 tonight here at the um, Palazzo, I believe, yes. And as always, please complete your session evaluation. We are not speakers as our day job, so any assistance you can give us and tips for content you'd like next time is much appreciated. Thank you very much. We will also open it up for Q&A now. We have about 10 minutes left of the session, and then we'll stay afterward for a bit. Um, we've got some other product team members here, and then we've got some of our sales incubation team here as well. Thank you.